So thank you for joining. Um, so my name is Matthew. Um, I am with um, Miguel Rollet, who is uh, uh, with me today uh, for this session. Um, this session we are um, going to start together is dealing with uh, going back to the, to the title so on frame video cloud on and, and off frame video clouds, so basically uh, linear channels uh, being uh, deployed in uh, on prem and off prem clouds. Um, as well as uh, OTT latency uh, and, and delivery. Um, today, uh, so me and Matthew, uh, I'm responsible for what is called at that end customer engineering. So customer engineering is, uh, is the team that you're discussing, uh, discussing with you every day, uh, either whether they are pre-sales or post-sales. Uh, Mikael Rolle is VP of Innovation with me today. Uh, we'll discuss a bit later on, on this, the, the OTT delivery part. Um, a bit of um, agenda for, uh, for the, uh, the, the cloud part of this discussion. So we have some cloud consideration I would like to discuss with you. Uh, probably this was raised some questions that we'll address a bit later on. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the microservices and um, the way we, we see this in ATEM. Uh, the previous session was uh, dealing with microservices in the um, uh, file domain. Here is going to be a bit of uh, uh, the, the, the file domain, but mainly the, the live domain. Um, and I'm going to discuss the Atom solution and do a, a bit of a demo in the cloud. Then we'll talk about low latency. Uh, Mikael will, will go through this agenda itself. Well, uh, we have several slides. We don't have so much time. So uh, I'm going to get started straight away, um, and uh, probably we can discuss a bit later. Um, yeah, the idea is to go through some cloud consideration, uh, discuss about uh, microservices uh, uh, paradigms, and uh, yeah, discuss ATEM solution and, and how do we uh, show this into the cloud. Um, so hopefully, uh, you hear me well, so I'm going back to, to this first slide. Uh, and I was saying that uh, probably like two or three years ago, we were uh, discussing whether uh, video could fit into the cloud and if it was a question uh, today. I think it's more, uh, it's, it's more a, a de facto uh, discussion and there is no, uh, there is no um, wondering whether cloud is a solution. It's, it's an available solution and, and, and people you know, know that video can be, uh, uh, or workloads can be fitting into the cloud, but it's the question whether it should be on-prem or off-prem. So uh, uh, many uh, operators, when they have a new workload into consideration, whether it's a refresh of a current infrastructure or it's uh, a new workload that they want to put in place, uh, they, they are wondering whether they should start um, in a private cloud environment or in an off-prem cloud uh, environment, so private and free. And here I'm just discussing a few, um, a few uh, uh, aspects that will lean to one or the other. Uh, and and, and I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you probably uh, uh, a bit discuss this uh, after, after the demonstration. But the, the way we see this at ATEM and given the different uh, discussion we, have with, we had with customers and the tests we've made uh, and the deployment we have, uh, on-prem is, is more seen for 24 by 7 operation, where off-prem uh, will be, uh, let's say, linked to temporary usage. In the previous session, we saw that uh, off-road can be one of the use cases. There are many other use cases, but for linear, for instance, um, we see that the economics behind linear are probably um, uh, leading to, uh, to an on-prem uh, solution because uh, linear is most, most of the time 24 by 7. Uh, we can see that after a few a few months of usage, probably uh, you can uh, uh, have a return of investment of, of an on-prem solution fairly, fairly fast. So the, the, the logic here needs to be to be thought. It can be probably, uh, I don't know, a, um, a spot channels can be a temporary usage uh, or an event channel can be a temporary usage. So that, that could be interesting for the cloud, public cloud instead. Uh, obviously, so 24 by 7 operation means established and probably a slowly growing lineup uh, where uh, off-prem will be like a, a fully new service startup, uh, either uh, something that is uh, independent and you want to start uh, uh, 
I don't know, like in, in the situation we are right now, where you, you may want to, to start the health channel for, for, a few, for a few weeks. So that could be interesting to start in cloud, for instance. But if you have a, a very uh, trendy channel that you have 24 by 7, uh, maybe on-premise is more interesting. Also, there are some uh, connectivity that you need to consider uh, when you start uh, to, to, to think about your workloads. Uh, if you want to go uh, to the cloud, you need to have um, your, your data center that is connected and, and have interconnection to probably some VPCs or or the network capabilities uh, so that you can upload content to, uh, to third parties where, where IT might be against, that, that happens. Uh, in the contrary, um, there, there are some, some uh, let's say, uh, st storage and processing capabilities in the off-prem clouds uh, where uh, you can have high scaling expectation uh, so that you can absorb peaks or, or, or throw a lot, of, uh, a lot of workloads at once uh, for fast processing. Um, so that were for more, more for technicality reasons. Uh, there are some also business drivers where uh, some companies are more capex centric because uh, this is their financial logics. So on prem obviously is more uh, let's say an investment that can needs to be thought on on the mid term at least. So uh, there is a capex financial logic behind where uh, the, the off-prem means that you can be on and off quite easily, uh, goes um, with some different business logics and the cost structure is a bit different. So OPEX, uh, you can, let's say, optimize your OPEX expenses thanks to the on and off capabilities of, um, of, of the solution you may go for. Last but the least, uh, but not the least, it's the engineering capabilities of your companies. Um, I will dis discuss uh, microservices and Kubernetes. So those are, uh, let's say, um, technologies that you need to master if you have an on-prem uh, solution because your engineers or at least your suppliers need to, to be able to provide uh, support on those. Where in, in the off-prem, uh, you have access to those technology uh, quite, quite easily. Uh, you still need to master those, but uh, they are as a service, so uh, probably you can have a, a leaner type of engineering team to, uh, to go with this fast. So um, overall, um, I'm, I'm not saying one is bad or, or the other is good. I'm just saying that there are, there are logics to be followed uh, and they are completely valid. valid. So us as a company, uh, we need to find a solution uh, to, to, to propose something that, that fits to both, right? So whether you want to go with uh, on-prem infrastructure or off-prem infrastructure, uh, we believe that there needs to be there for, for both. And this leads me to uh, presenting a bit the microservices. Uh, I guess um, many of you uh, have already uh, encountered what is microservices, but our logic and why we went for this uh, as part of ATEM is because we wanted to we wanted to move from a monolithic approach to a distributed approach, uh, where where scaling uh, was uh, was easier, and the distribution of the processing was was easier. Um, and thanks to the microservices, we are able today to redefine the software structure and to have software fitting more into uh, the cloud environment, whether uh, they are in-house or, or serviced. Um, obviously, the, the, the monolithic approach has some uh, pros, which are based uh, on, on some efficiencies because uh, a monolithic, a monolithic uh, solution, when it's when it, uh, thought, uh, let's say, in a closed environment, uh, can be very efficient. But it's obvious that uh, in the data center we have currently, things are changing very fast. Uh, and probably uh, those approaches were, are not fitting to, 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 to the IT capabilities that uh, uh, our customer have today. So uh, we were thinking of a distributed approach, uh, and I'm uh, describing here uh, how microservices has been thought in, in the Atem way. Uh, I, I mean, there we have a, a database that can be uh, completely and fully uh, high, high available thanks to uh, uh, triple redundancy. Uh, we have uh, alarmings and statistics uh, that can be out of the processing nodes. We have watch folders that uh, can be connecting to external uh, storage, whether it's uh, cloud S3 storage or uh, OpenShift type of storage in an uh, uh, on-prem environment. The front end is uh, fully web-based with an API using a standard uh, 3.0 open API. And uh, we have um, scaling capabilities, which are fairly independent and stateless, uh, which help us to actually reestablish um, uh, processing when it's needed. 
So um, it's great, we have microservices, but the microservices must need to be actually orchestrated at some point of time. And uh, in an on-prem cloud, and probably things, this is something that, that, that when we discuss with our clients, uh, it's not obvious, but the orchestration is a point of attention because we have services, microservices, let's say, and they need to be orchestrated. So we need to have someone that conducts uh, the way this is going to be um, uh, running together. And whether it's it's on-prem or off-prem, or let's say public or private cloud, uh, you have solutions that are available on the market. And uh, Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services are offering Kubernetes, which is an orchestrator as a service to simplify deployment and operation. Where in the private cloud, it's a bit different because you don't have a service for uh, Kubernetes. So you need to find a way to orchestrate this. Um, and there are solutions uh, existing. Uh, uh, the, and, and the idea when you actually move to the microservices world is to try to find the, uh, let's say, supplier there that will fit to most of your workloads. Um, uh, obviously, we're talking about Kubernetes, Kubernetes, uh, sorry, Kubernetes orchestration for video later on with David. That was the previous presenter. Uh, there is one session tomorrow at 12. So I, I encourage you to, uh, to have a look at this to understand what, what is the logic behind it. Uh, the the attempt shows is um, to go with a solution that has its own orchestration capabilities. And we offer uh, cloud orchestration based on Kubernetes because it's today one of the standards uh, we've been uh, we've been working with, and we've seen many many customers going there. This orchestration is provided as a, a default standard as part of our microservice solution. But obviously, if a customer has its own orchestration solution, like uh, um, not to mention it, OpenShift, for instance, uh, we can we can deal with this. Uh, however, um, the the idea is to have the capabilities, the exact same capabilities whether it's, it's your, our own orchestration, which we supply, or the orchestration from the customer. And the microservices, as of today, are, are fairly available. We have uh, several solutions, which are either live or uh, add-in session solution, Mux, Mux solution, even uh, origin that we can supply as, uh, as origin today, as, um, sorry, microservices today. Just taking the time. I'm, I'm going quite fast, so. Um, uh, so if I want to describe then, uh, that's, that's the offer, so probably a, a bit of a marketing, but if I'm going through uh, some more uh, Python microservices architecture, um, I'm describing here the way we will basically deploy a, a edent uh, uh, into, into a cloud environment. And there are many, many three aspects. Uh, obviously, uh, I can discuss some more. But one of the first aspects is, is the Kubernetes cluster. So as I was saying, uh, we have an environment with cluster that is actually controlling and orchestrating microservices. Uh, this cluster can be high available thanks to three master nodes that will be uh, complementing each other if one fails. Then we have a, what we call a control plane and a data plane, which will be one to use uh, the uh, monitoring and control of the node itself and the data, the data, the data plane that will be used to actually uh, get the traffic in and out or the data in and out of the uh, uh, of the node itself. And there are distinct uh, things to uh, multiple CNIs we can use on the node itself to, to fully separate the traffic uh, from control to data and to uh, enable a high uh, availability of the nodes. Uh, we also have the capability of supporting multicasts in uh, some environments, and I, I can discuss that uh, if you wish to. Uh, on, the on, on the application itself, uh, obviously we are leveraging some of the Kubernetes capabilities, which is the smooth and automatic updates of uh, the node itself, either going through some hardware we can provide, or uh, by scheduling some updates uh, using our functional services. And the application uh, can be also natively redundant thanks to the hailing capabilities of uh, Kubernetes, which helps us to actually uh, have uh, robust, robust pods and the uh, capability to, uh, to regenerate a pod when uh, one fails. Okay, so, uh, so that's the, uh, the solution itself, um, like it is today. Um, let me uh, probably go through 
some demo, um, and I will I will try to to show you a an AWS based uh, um, live uh, StatMux solution we have, and I will uh, uh, try to to show you uh, how is it uh, working today with uh, uh, an attempt solution. So um, and let me go through the setup we have here. Um, obviously, this is something we have uh, built for NAB, but uh, even that NEB is not there, um, we're doing it here, and uh, we're happy to do that here for you guys. Uh, the idea is to show uh, um, uh, in, in a head end, right? Uh, using what we call um, an AMS, uh, AMS is the Attend Management System uh, solution that will actually be monitoring uh, uh, a StatMux pool of channels uh, together with the live and the MUX. And uh, you will see that we have the ability on, on an AWS base um, uh, setup to do stat mixing. Uh, we here we are showing three different channels because it's a simple setup. We didn't want to have something too complex. Uh, the IMS uh, itself has uh, is, is a microservice solution. It will be able to monitor also uh, microservices um, based. Uh, Deployment, so we will have uh, the, the, the the ability to see this into the, the console of the AMS. Uh, then, uh, I, for simplifying the workload, uh, I actually used a uh, another Titan with an Origin server there to be able to pick one of the of the of the channels which is in the max now, for uh, showing that is actually uh, being transmitted and it's working. Uh, the idea was also to be. Uh, uh, on stage when when going to NAB with a with a phone to show that uh, we were also able to have a, a convergence with both both mix and live uh, doing uh, statistical metaplotting as well as AV today. Okay, so let me just uh, trying to uh, change the screen to go through uh, the on the. Uh, the application itself. So um, what I'm having here is the IMS. So the IMS, which is the Atem Management System, obviously you're seeing everything. Uh, please shout if this is not the case, uh, where we present different uh, elements of the head end itself. So we have the instances, which are running right now. We have the cluster, the Kubernetes cluster. We are monitoring some user capabilities and alarming. And if I'm going to um, the instances itself, we are seeing here that we have two instances, one which is uh, the uh, live AWS and which is one which is the MUX AWS. We are using this URL, um, and obviously this is a URL, you, you will have to trust me that it is that it is on uh, Amazon because um, if I'm going there, uh, I was trying to go there. Uh, if I'm going to uh, root, I'm having a root uh, 53 uh, being configured uh, with this with this DNS, so that I can show. Uh, there we go. I can you can see here that I have my, my domain being registered as part of the root 53, and here we have uh, I'm uh, transforming the video the delivery, which is uh, linking to Amazon. So this is an Amazon deployment, right? Uh, so I also have a little player here, uh, but let's go back to the AMS itself. So I have two AMSs, uh, I have two uh, Titan Live, uh, Titans, sorry. And uh, the uh, if I'm going to the service view here, uh, let's say services, you will see that I have uh, currently four uh, channels being transcoded. So three, one, two, three, the soccer channels being uh, part of a stuff mix pool and the one NFL HLS, which is the uh, ABR version of, of the, uh, obviously, if I'm going to uh, Titan Live itself, which is uh, the um, uh, transcoder linked to the um, AMS I was talking about, we are seeing the same type of services. Uh, and here, obviously, I could do some changes if I want to, but uh, I will try to do everything from the AMS. So going back to the services, I have three different services. And so I have uh, an NFL services, and the NFL services is here as well, available on uh, a player here that have 
which is a, a native player uh, from the um, uh, from the apps we have on Google. So um, basically, uh, we can see that uh, we are able to uh, transcode image data services from the mix, which is nice. But what's interesting is that, uh, for instance, I have the capability here to force a blackout. So what is going to be a blackout is basically the capability to activate or dis disactivate uh, the, uh, the, the, the channels so that we can see that in the max it's not going to be uh, available, but in the uh, NFL uh, HLS channels as well, it's not going to be available too because it's linked to what's in, what is in the output of the max. So let's have a look at the max. And the max currently is having three different channels, right? Uh, this is the inputs we have from uh, from Titan Live here. Right? So if I'm going to the max again, right? and if I do uh, majoring here, we'll go back to uh, the majoring of the services. And I'm going to do a simple, um, probably I would like to do this on the list view. Um, I'm going to do here. And a simple uh, logo insertion, but a logo insertion that uh, that will be, or let's say, let's we can try a blackout, but a blackout here will be just to stop of the view. Okay, so I'm going to stop this, right? And we will see that uh, the video is going to stop, and therefore the HLS video is going to stop, right? Itself because it's linked to the max. If I'm going to the max itself, we'll see that there is a drop in terms of uh, video quality because it's a still picture. So we are using all the bandwidth we can for the other channels. And then the buffer here will, uh, will finish. So it means that the, uh, once the buffer of the HLS will be, will be finalized, um, this should stop, right? Because there is some buffer. We're not talking about low latency here. It's just plain, plain HLS. So let's give it um, a few seconds. There we go. So the AMS is telling me that here uh, I'm, I'm done, here I'm done as well, and here I'm done too. So that's good. So let's imagine that I have new rights again and I can show my content again. So I can start my black my blackout again. Oh, and we can start my channel, not my blackout, right? We'll deep blackout the channel and it's gonna start again. The HL is gonna start again, we'll see after a few minutes seconds maybe and then um, uh, after a while here it will be uh, going back to um, to live all right so uh, that's uh, how it is within the AMS probably I need to try now or maybe I need to uh, back to the chat again yeah, there's going to be um, I think 30 seconds or 60 seconds so let me just um, talk about what's in there uh, in the AMS. Uh, there we go. I think you're hearing the sound. So this is starting again, of course. So um, I was about to talk about the AMS, and hopefully I'm not, I haven't lost you. Um, I just wanted to go to the cluster and to show you that we had the capability to make the clusters. So we are seeing that there is the cluster of the AMS itself here where we have the ability to see what is the type of cluster and the application it is running. Okay, so we are able to expose what type of application, uh, atom application is, is being run, as well as see uh, all uh, the pods that are currently running. Therefore, the need for, um, for, for orchestration because there's a lot of pods. Uh, something I haven't told you guys is that in the live here, uh, we are seeing the CPU and uh, uh, this is also uh, can be a trigger for us to, uh, to manage some of the actions the MS can do. Um, uh, last but not least is the capability of the AMS to have alarming and events on what's going on. So whether there is uh, someone that uh, updated a service or uh, someone that changed uh, configuration into the head-end itself. So everything can be managed from here. All right. Uh, so um, that's about it on, on the, the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the demo demonstration itself. So I'm just looking at the questions uh, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. Um, uh, there is a slideshow, right, there you go. Um, 
And uh, yeah, before we move to uh, to OTT licenses, um, or I don't know, how do you want to do that, uh, Mikael? Do you want to go through uh, uh, the licenses straight away? Or uh, shall, or shall I, uh, because I have just one question right now, so probably we can wait for, for more questions. I think it's better to, to have questions on yours before I move to the second one. Okay, no problem. So, um, uh, so yeah, uh, interesting question. So thank you for the anonymous attendee. So how do you support multicast between the servers and the, all the nodes? As AWS is not supporting natively the multicast, it's a great question. Um, so uh, we are using a uh, VPN between the, the different nodes, uh, so that uh, we are able to tunneling uh, multicast traffic between uh, between the different nodes and nodes. Right. So that's a way to that's the way we do that. Um, I have no other questions, so probably we can move forward. I don't know, Remy, what do you think? Yes. Okay. Let's move. No, uh, no, Matt. I have another question yep. uh, which is coming oh, up. Oh, yep. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, quick question about blackout. Could you set blackout to trigger or static image? Yeah, uh, it can be both. Uh, we can have black. We can have uh, static image. Actually, we have a logo insertion capability, and uh, this uh, logo insertion capability uh, can be uh, the size of a, of, a, of an image. So we can use that uh, to show an image. This can, this can be also uh, a quick animation if, if it needs to be. Um, Matt, I have an, another question, uh, Cohen, Go which yeah. is, um, um, as, uh, as head of uh, customer engineer in Europe, uh, someone is asking, anonymous attendee, what is the split that you are seeing between uh, off-prem versus off-prem? And when it comes to off-prem, is it more about uh, private cloud of premises or public cloud and which public cloud so can you give a, a snapshot on on what you see in terms of deployment mm. so um, I think um, everything everyone is interested in uh, in public cloud in general um, uh, we have a lot of uh, I mean, we have a lot of uh, questions around uh, public cloud and if I get your question well is uh, do we have a lot of customers going public cloud, or do they stay uh, on, on on their own data center, whether it's on That's prem it. or, or, or private cloud? Right. Correct. Uh, so um, I must say that uh, for linear, given the, the the complexity of the processing, it's a, it's a complex. Uh, it's it's not an easy uh, process to be uh, to be cloudify, if I can say. Uh, so we are not seeing so many customers moving to the to the uh, public cloud. Uh, it's it's as I'm saying, and this is this was at the, at the beginning of the uh, the slide deck. It's mainly for temporary usage. So whether it's an event like uh, Roland Garros or I don't know the Tour de France or, uh, or you know uh, an event that is uh, that is short in time, that is not too long, or whether it's a new company starting up with new workloads like uh, Fubo TV or uh, Dazone, you know, uh, just to, just to mention them. Um, those guys they will uh, tend to to start uh, in the cloud because it's easy to scale uh, and uh, it's easy to start basically, and you don't need to have your own data center. Uh, I would say. Uh, it's it's a portion of our of, of our customers, um, but it's 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 not a tremendous portion of our customers. Then uh, we have other vendors, which are the established vendors uh, like uh, ISPs or service providers, uh, you know, uh, or or um, uh, uh, digital DTH uh, 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 provider, you know. Uh, those guys uh, they are still in. Uh, in private, uh, private environment mainly because they have established uh, data centers and they are looking at uh, cloud to diversify peak activities. Uh, so like I'm, I was saying, uh, probably a temporary usage or uh, to optimize uh, data center usage as it was discussed before with David. Um, we have customers with big data centers not being used for, for instance, and they want to leverage the uh, I mean, those, those processing to, to do uh, uh, coding there as well, but 
the issue with that is uh, the orchestration, which needs to be really thought through before uh, trying to do so. Okay. One more use case, uh, and I see a question here, which is a good one. Uh, I didn't talk about it. It could be uh, a DR, uh, disaster recovery. So there is a, even the name for that is called DRS. Uh, so disaster recovery as a service. Um, we have actually customers proposing this to customers. So we have uh, provider, pr providers of services, uh, uh, you know, um, um, uh, able to, uh, to propose disaster recovery as a service. Uh, and the microservices is very interesting for that because it's really helping you. Uh, you know, the more channels you get, the more processing uh, you can add. So, uh, so that's, that's very good. Um, the uh, cloud, the, the thing is the, the link to the cloud and the security. So for instance, uh, if you want to uh, have to be, have a disaster recovery as a service of an IPTV, uh, an IPTV or cloud that exists, uh, you have uh, security constraints with, uh, with um, the, uh, the CAS, for instance, or with the DRM if you do OTT. And uh, some, and you may have uh, you may have an architectural issue. Uh, you have this scaling up the way you want. So, uh, so what's happening? It's most of the time um, you will limit that to uh, not essential essential channels. Uh, probably you won't have to you know, 20, 20 percent prime channel uh, being uh, redundant, and the rest into uh, disaster recovery just to uh, to be sure you're not encountering issues on the way. Um, that's that's one of the um, I guess that's what I could say so far. Um, okay, 